Upselling and suggestive selling. Upselling and suggestive selling are techniques used to increase an establishment's average spend and give guests a better dining experience. Upselling requires an employee to suggest higher priced items or extra items that the guests hadn't thought of ordering. Suggestive selling requires the promotion of specific items when taking guests' orders. Let's look at upselling and suggestive selling in practice and incentivizing upselling and suggestive selling. Let's see how to use upselling and suggestive selling in practice. If a guest orders a basic breakfast, a waiter can use this as an opportunity to practice his selling skills. The waiter can ask the guest if they are allergic to anything or if they have any preferences regarding the way their eggs are cooked. The waiter asks these questions to acquire some background knowledge on the guest's preferences, which he can then apply to his selling techniques. With this background knowledge, the waiter can offer the guest the larger breakfast option with a juice. By using upselling and suggestive selling skills, the waiter increases the average spend by encouraging the guest to buy more than he initially would have. Now let's have a look at how to incentivize upselling and suggestive selling. Incentivizing your employees to use these selling techniques is important. For the most immediate incentive, start by explaining that upselling and suggestive selling could help to increase tips. This should motivate them to make use of these techniques. You could also consider incentives like a cash bonus to the employee with the highest sales or a day off on their birthday. To recap, we looked at upselling and suggestive selling in practice and incentivizing upselling and suggestive selling. With upselling and suggestive selling techniques, establishments can ensure great service, a hard-working team and an increased average spend. Introducing food and beverage offers and promotions. Using offers and promotions effectively can help an establishment increase guest visits and drive sales. To find out what promotions work best for an establishment, let's look at what promotions are and analyzing promotions. Let's start by looking at what promotions are. An establishment will use promotions to drive sales of a certain item over a limited period of time. These specials are used to entice guests to come to the establishment. An example of a good promotion is a free dessert with every main meal. This promotion could run for a week, effectively increasing the number of guests visiting the establishment during those seven days and driving sales with each main meal sold. Managers need to evaluate promotions to not only determine if they are effectively driving sales, but also increasing profit. By evaluating the ineffectiveness of unrealistic promotions, such as a free meal with every drink or a free car with every coffee, an effective promotion can be put in place. An optional free upgrade from a normal coffee to an artisanal coffee. Let's see how the manager decided on the coffee promotion by looking at analyzing promotions. For a promotion to be successful, it needs to affect the establishment's revenue positively. The costs shouldn't outweigh the returns. Analyze the establishment's promotions over the course of a month and determine the cost of the promotion compared to how much revenue it generated. This will give an overview on what promotions should still be used and what promotions are ineffective. In the next lesson, we will look at new food and beverage promotions that are created especially for the establishment's target market. In this lesson, we covered what promotions are and analyzing promotions. Ensure the establishment runs effective promotions that are appealing to guests and analyze them to determine if they are generating revenue. Keep the establishment's target market in mind for the next lesson as we look at new food and beverage promotions.